Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Dwyer Sports Betting. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, it looks like, for now, the Danny Garcia, Zab Judafite, has been postponed because Danny Garcia has suffered a devastating rib injury. He's posted a photo of the injury on Twitter, and quite frankly, the injury looks bad. Understand, when we talk about ribs, you're talking about not just bone, doesn't have to be a broken rib, you're talking about cartilage. And if you've ever had a rib problem, you know that you use your ribs a lot more than you think you do, right? Let me also point out too that, as I'll talk about in this video, a rib injury is a recipe for disaster in the sport of boxing. Let's remember, guys are actually trying to take advantage of your injuries. They're trying to hit you on the injury. It's a problem for a host of reasons. But first, let's talk about Zab Judah. If both of these guys were healthy, I would expect Danny Garcia to win the fight. Zab Judah would have a puncher's chance, especially early in the fight. Let's remember, Zab Judah actually knocked down Floyd Mayweather. If you look at the film, Mayweather's glove hits the canvas. Zab Judah is one of the more dangerous fighters in the sport early in a fight, right? Let's talk about it. You know, Zab Judah really needs to be put on that list of fighter who's willing to take on all comers, right? That list isn't that big. I call it the Evander Holyfield, Carl Froch, Glenn Johnson list, right? Some fighters who really should be on the list are Bernard Hopkins, for example. Even though Hopkins fought Kelly Pavlik, has fought Jean Pascal twice, has fought Chad Dawson, is scheduled to fight Tavares Cloud, right? So certainly at light heavy, you would have to say, wow, this guy's taking on all comers. Bernard Hopkins won't fight Andre Ward, right? Those two guys are friends. I think those two guys understand that that would be a frustratingly complex night, right? As a result, Bernard Hopkins is not on the list. Vladimir Klitschko has been lawn mowing the heavyweight division for years, right? The same could be said of Vitaly Klitschko. Neither can be on the list because neither will fight each other. And of course, the other person is, you know, a world-class fighter in the division. Has a claim, quite frankly, to be the best of the era, right? Let me also point out, too, I understand that the Adonis Stevenson crowd will say, hey, what about us? You know, why can Carl Froch be on the list if he won't fight Stevenson? I believe Carl Froch would fight Stevenson. The problem Carl Froch is having is simply that there are much bigger money fights out there. Carl Froch would rather fight Mikael Kessler for millions in a rematch, and we all know that's a tough rematch, right? Or Lucien Boutte for millions, rather than fight Adonis Stevenson for less than millions, right? So some of these guys, I admit, I'm making a judgment call on. In my mind, Carl Froch would take on all comers. Evander Holyfield has been campaigning of late to fight a Klitschko. We know he fought Nikolai Valuev in his prime. Let's remember that Evander Holyfield not only fought Riddick Bowe and Mike Tyson, he also fought Lennox Lewis, right? We're talking about that rare guy who has fought everyone. And of course, Glenn Johnson has fought everyone, it seems, from Roy Jones, Bernard Hopkins, back in the day, to Carl Froch and George Groves today, right? Well, Zab Judah actually belongs on that list because if you think about Judah's fights, he's fought Lucas Mathis. By the way, I mentioned that Zab Judah's dangerous early in fights. Let's remember that 
He won that Mathis fight because of what he did the first half of that fight. Right? He hung with Mathis. He survived Mathis. He wasn't knocked out like Humberto Soto or Mike Dallas was recently. Right? Judas fought Lucas Mathis. He's fought Mikel Cotto. Keep in mind, I've said he's taken on all comers. Not that he's beaten all comers. Right? He fought Miguel Cotto. He fought Floyd Mayweather. He fought Amir Khan. He fought Corey Spinks. He fought Costa Zoo. Right? He's not the one pulling out of the Danny Garcia fight. Right? He signed to fight Danny Garcia. Uh, Danny Garcia is the one pulling back. So as you view Zab Judah, understand Zab Judah is a warrior who is willing to take on all Comers. In my opinion, he's one of the few in the sport. Now, let me say this. Angel Garcia pointed out at a contentious press conference, Angel Garcia is the father of Danny Garcia, that in his eyes, Zab Jude is a four-round fighter. I'll say this. It's debatable whether Zab Judah actually beat Lucas Mathis. What's not debatable is the fact that Lucas Mathis won most of the later rounds, right? The Kaiser Mabusa fight, which is a fight you need to look at. Zab Judah looked good, looked like he was starting to run out of gas, quite frankly. I thought that KO was a lucky KO. I believe that Zab Judah, quite frankly, does have a stamina problem. Floyd Mayweather, he jumps out to a lead on Floyd. I thought Zab Judah was winning that fight at least into the fourth round. Then Floyd methodically takes him apart the rest of the fight. Judah gets frustrated. There's a brawl at one point. Um, it ended up getting Roger Mayweather suspended for a while. The bottom line is Zab Judah had a lead, got caught, got passed. I believe the same can be said for the Zab Judah-Miguel Cotto fight. Right, Zab Judah looked good early, had the hand speed advantage. Quite frankly, in terms of boxing skill, and I know this statement's going to be loaded, in terms of boxing skill, I believe he should have beaten Miguel Cotto. Right? You know the rest. Miguel Cotto, with withering body shots, with some shots that were a little bit below the body, some low blows, was able to slow Judah down, take him out later in that fight, right? Danny Garcia's nickname is Swift. Danny Garcia is no slouch when it comes to hand speed. His hands aren't as fast as Zab Judah, but he's not completely slow in the hand speed department, right? I believe that Zab Judah, who throws the straighter punches, would probably have an advantage early in that fight. But let's remember, Danny Garcia is in his 20s, Zab Judah is in his 30s, I believe, as has been Zab's pattern. I believe that later in that fight, Danny Garcia would catch up with Zab Judah and, in my opinion, would likely take him out, right? That's if healthy, right? So the way I would play the fight, if the odds allow, and they might not, because Danny Garcia should be favored in the fight, would be Garcia to win the fight, hedged against... Zab Judah by KO. If I want to be more adventurous, given that Zab Judah barely, and I mean barely, survived Lucas Mathis, I would just take both guys by KO with the expectation that Danny Garcia would close the show. Now that's if both were healthy. Well, now we find out Danny Garcia has a rib contusion. The doctors have told him that it takes four to six weeks for a rib contusion to heal. Now, let me just tell you, if you're an NFL fan, a National Football League fan, you know that when your quarterback has rib contusion problems, has rib cartilage problems, you know that they'll have him out there with a flak jacket, right? Because any further punishment on those ribs could literally exacerbate the injury. 
if Danny Garcia, a mid-range hooker, has a rib problem, that's going to impact every part of his preparation for an opponent with faster hand speed than him. Right? Danny's not going to be able to train. Danny's not going to be able to have a sparring partner throw punches on that rib. Let me also point out, too, that if you're a mid-range hooker, like Danny Garcia is, you need two hands. You can't be a one-handed mid-range hooker, right? If all you can do is throw a good hook with one hand, then you better be setting it up with some very straight punches with your other hand, right? Because quite frankly, the thing that works for mid-range hookers is the fact that the punches are coming from both sides, right? Danny Garcia doesn't really throw straight punches. All of his punches come with a loop. And so if that rib injury prevents him from throwing one of his hands against a seasoned fighter like Zab Judah, who went 12 rounds with Lucas Mathis, who has big-time knockout power, right? Don't sleep on Zab Judah's boxing ability. Against a boxer of Zab Judah's skill level, that's a recipe for disaster. Let me also point out, too, that you know, these rib injuries can zap your power. You know, in boxing, we know that one of the ways to slow down a faster opponent, in fact, Exhibit A is the Miguel Cotto, Zab Judah fight. One of the ways to slow down a faster opponent is to hit him with withering body shots early in a fight, right? The idea is you go to the body early, that guy slows down later you're able to catch up with him, right? The logic is simply that guys need torque when they throw punches. If you're sore all up and down, your stomach and rib area, if it's sore, if it's not right, that's going to impact your hand speed. That's going to impact your power. That's going to impact your accuracy. And we know boxing is grueling. You get to the championship rounds against guys with one punch knockout power. Understand, Zab Judah doesn't just have fast hands. Zab Judah has one punch knockout power. Exhibit A here is his KO of Kaiser Mabusa. Right? He hits Kaiser Mabusa. It's a problem. Right? Zab's the southpaw. That left hand is loaded. Right? I don't mean legally loaded. I'm not talking um, Antonio Margarito hand wraps. I'm talking about punching power. Right? It's loaded. And so my point is simply this. Danny Garcia's rib contusion makes this fight unbettable. He might as well walk in the ring with a bullseye on those ribs. We know that Zab Judah is going to be targeting those ribs. That rib injury might prevent Danny Garcia from being 100% Danny Garcia. He might not be able to throw the two-handed attack that he normally would throw if he had healthy ribs. He might not have the power and snap on his punches. That's the first problem, right? The second problem is, quite frankly, this is boxing. You have a rib injury, you can't wear a flak jacket in the ring. Guys are going to be, you know, aiming for those ribs. If you try to avoid exacerbating the rib injury in training, then you're going to have sparring partners not throwing at your rib cage when everyone watching this video knows that Zab Jude is going to be aiming for Danny Garcia's rib cage. The preparation won't meet the actual execution, right? So put me among those who will be on the sidelines for this fight. I was planning on taking Danny Garcia in this one. I'm not now, right? You know, I, you know, the problem is boxing's a pressure sport. We all know that these fighters all believe, especially fighters in their 20s, 
that they can overcome whatever adversity is in front of them. You have the network, you have the arena, you have the promoters all pressuring these guys to go forward with fights when they have injuries. And what most boxing fans don't realize is what George Foreman used to talk about. These fighters almost always have injuries, right? Your hands aren't quite right. We're hearing that, you know, Floyd Mayweather in the past has had hand problems. Your hands aren't quite right. Um, you know, you might not have a shoulder as healthy as you'd like and stuff like that. Well, you know what? Sometimes fighters can work around the injuries. I just don't believe that a rib injury is the kind of injury a fighter can work around. Could you imagine Danny Garcia against Lucas Mathis in that fight with a rib injury? You know, let me just say too, you can think you're 100% at the beginning of a fight, right? If you have a rib injury and, oh, you're able to survive a couple of weeks of training without it getting re-injured, you might think, okay, great. I'm all set to go forward. Well, I got news for you. You know, fights are so grueling that, you know, would you really want to go to war with a rib injury when in the seventh, eighth, ninth rounds, when your body is fatigued, when you're in the moment, when you're trying to dodge punches and stuff like that, suddenly you start feeling a twinge in your rib cage? I think Danny Garcia is under a lot of pressure from a lot of people to make this fight happen. Quite frankly, an injury like this is the kind of injury where he should really take significant time off. If this fight were going to be done right, it would be postponed for, I don't know, four months or so. I don't think it will be. I think they're going to try to push this fight forward maybe four to six weeks. Right, And I think that's going to be too soon for this gambler's comfort level. I think Danny Garcia is younger, fresher, and has better stamina from Zab Judah. But I'm going to be on the sidelines for this fight. Let me hear from you. Do you feel that Danny Garcia with a rib contusion is going to be able to recover quickly enough to have this fight happen in six weeks? Or do you feel that the world of boxing is going to wait for four or five months for this fight to happen. Keep in mind, a lot can happen in that time period, right? We just had the Kelly Pavlik, Andre Ward fight go from being set to having Ward have, you know, an injury that required surgery to then having Kelly Pavlik literally retire before the fight took place, right? This injury changes everything. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And if you believe that there are a lot of fighters who belong on this list of fighters who will take on all comers, or if you believe that we should overlook the fact that the Klitschkos won't fight each other, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't fight my brother in the ring, right? But if you believe that we should overlook the fact that the Klitschkos won't fight each other and that Andre Ward won't fight <laughs> Bernard Hopkins and that we should, you know, somehow include any of them on the list of fighters who uh, will take on all comers. I am all ears. Let me also say, too, that I know I'll hear about Juan Manuel Marquez and a few other people. You know, Juan Manuel Marquez ducked Robert Guerrero for years. Anytime a legendary fighter has a number one contender and ducks him for multiple years, in my opinion, he can't get on this list. I'll agree, I'll remove Carl Froch from my little short list here. If Carl Froch is still champion and hasn't fought Adonna Stevenson in 18 months, right? All I'm saying is, let's not kid ourselves, even the great Ray Robinson did not fight Charlie Burley, right? Fighters, duck fighters, Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, has no excuse for not fighting prime Antonio Margarito. I know now we can say, oh, Margarito um, lost some fights. You know what? The question is, are you willing to take on a guy in his prime, right? Margarito was a handful when he was in his prime and Mayweather was in his. Anyway, let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.